DJI just released the Pocket 2 and the website for the Pocket 2 is suspiciously pushing the Pocket 2 photo capabilities. Of course, I cannot compare a 4K gimbal stabilized camera with professional photo gear, so I ended up comparing it to what already is in my Pocket today, which is a last generation Google Pixel 4 phone, which we are going to compare against the DJI Pocket 2. So let's not waste any more time and jump into the video right after I told you that you should subscribe to this channel and become a member. All right, let's go. All right, so we loaded all those photos into Lightroom and we have a color coding going on here. So just so you know, all the photos with a green color code are photos taken by the Pixel 4 and the yellow ones are panoramic photos or super resolution photos by DJI. If we take a look at this photo, it looks pretty fine. But there is a reason why I have chosen this specific location and this is this location is packed with details. Let's zoom to 100% and it still looks fine in my opinion. But if we go down to the darker areas in the photo, we see uh, it's it's starting to degrade. Um, if we go into 200%, we will see, yeah, there's there's little to none detail anymore. And I'm not even sure where the, where the staircase is and where the greenery should be. It looks just like smashed pixel all over the place. Details in the darks, not that great. Also something to really um, care about is chromatic aberration. And there is a lot of it. But then if we leave the edges of the camera and go to the middle of the image, it's pretty much gone. But still, definitely something which is noticeable and definitely not something I would desire. All right, let's go to the next photo. This is an eight times zoom with the camera itself. And well, this doesn't look too good in my opinion, even in its full resolution. So let's zoom in anyway to 200% and yeah, this is... Definitely not something I would take and upload because those details, they are, sorry, they're just gone. And again, we have chromatic aberration and nah, not really, not really nice. That that A time zoom, not as they advertised, or at least not in this specific situation with mediocre light and many, many details. So let's go to the next photo, which is a photo I think um, went pretty well because it's pretty bright here. And even if we zoom in and let the image load, I have to say I am pretty okay with the details in this one. Um, sure, we have some um, chromatic aberration still going on against the bright background. But to be honest, if we upload this to social media, probably nobody would ever notice. So this is pretty fine. Uh, same here. Again, as soon as there is enough light, the image quality is okay. Sure, we have the chromatic aberration, but this is not really something I really care about in a camera in that price range. So therefore, it's pretty okay. Pretty okay. So let's go to a complete different scene, which is this one. And this one, at first glance, looks fine too. On this side here is the DJI Pocket 2, and on that side is the Google Pixel 4. And if we zoom in, we see, wow, there is a drastic difference in image quality. And this is not just with that one picture. Here's another picture I took with both cameras. And if we zoom in in the Pocket 2, and then zoom in in the Pixel 4, we will notice there is a slight difference in image quality. And this is like with every photo I took. So let's do another comparison. Let's zoom into this socket, same here. And we see the pixel just has more details. And if we go up here, it comes apparent that the Pocket 2 compared to the Pixel 4 has a problem with chromatic aberration. And remember, DJI is pushing their 64 megapixel in the Pocket 2, but the Pixel 4 only has a 12.5 megapixel sensor. In my opinion, it's pretty hard to justify using the Pocket 2 for photos when you already have a camera in your pocket which is at least as good as the Pocket when not better. And this is the Pixel 4, a 2019 smartphone. So I don't even want to know how well the Pocket is holding up against the iPhone 12. 
All right, let's stop to compare the Pocket 2 to the Pixel 4 and let's start to see what we can learn about the DJI Pocket 2's panorama and super resolution capabilities. But first, if you like the video so far, make sure to smash the like button down below. So this is one of the high definition panorama from the DJI Pocket 2, which is stitched together out of nine photos and to stitch this I use the DJI Media Maker so there is no mistake by Lightroom or by Photoshop involved in stitching those images. They are stitched with first party software from DJI themselves so let's take a look what we can learn about this photo. Once more if we take a look at the entire photo as a whole it looks fine. Really not much to complain about but as soon again as we go to zoom in into stuff we see again there is the chromatic aberration becoming apparent and the image just doesn't look that high definition and crisp to me. However, let's go to the next panorama. This again is a panorama stitched out of those nine photos and again here if we zoom in this one looks better, again, most likely because the entire scene is brighter as we learned at the beginning of the video. Let's go further. This is a panorama, a 180 degree panorama, which is just stitched together of four pictures in one row. And again, here it's a rather bright scene. So I'm pretty happy with the resolution with this one. Pretty well done. So let's go to the next panorama. Again, this one is a 100 degree panorama. And again, here uh, with a slight less bright scene, it looks about fine as long as we don't go too much into the details. For example, if we try to zoom in here, we see it's just not gonna work. But as a whole, as, as a photo, we're just gonna upload to Twitter or Instagram or send it to our Facebook friends. Hey, totally fine, but just not really what I understand as high definition panorama, especially when you push a 64 megapixel sensor as if that would mean anything to quality. But still, if you push like those numbers and then don't really deliver something which is above average, I'm not that happy because the photos I take with my cameras are usually shot on a sensor with 12 to 24 megapixels and 64 just means nothing here. This is kind of sad. One more thing I have to say. This is more or less a first look. I saw those photos today for the first time. It was the first time I took photos with the Pocket 2 today. So this is like the first time I tried this. I am planning to do an in-depth review of the Pocket 2 in about a week when I played around with it long enough and we will definitely go back to picture quality and address some other things like ISO performance, general noise and stuff. So make sure to subscribe to this channel to not miss the video when we do the full review of the DJI Pocket 2 where we will for sure go back to picture quality and address some stuff we saw today. I will try this again once I have all my testing done and when we do the in-depth review. For the moment, I have to say, if you just want to take photos and upload them to Instagram and you have a Pocket 2 anyway, yes, you can do it. But in case you're not rocking a super cheap budget phone, you might be better off just using what's already in your pocket, which most likely is your phone. I hope you liked this video. In case you did, please like, subscribe to the channel and I will see you at the next video, which is this playlist. All right, bye.